Good morning friends. Today we are going to have a discussion on the topic Negleria fowleri, Acanthomoeba and Balmuthia. Those three are pathogenic free living amoebae. So the first one Negleria fowleri which is a brain eating amoeba which belongs to genus Negleria uh, that causes primary amoebic meningoencephalitis PAM. Now coming on to its history and distribution. It was named after Malcolm Fowler along with Carter. It is thermophilic, that is it is a heat loving organism that thrives in warm water at low oxygen tension and it is also seen in soil. In last 10 years from 2002 to 2010, about 32 infections were reported in US and in India a total of 17 cases have been reported. Now coming on to its morphology, there are two morphological forms. The first one is the trophozoid and the second one is the cyst. The trophozoid form is again divided into two, amoeboid trophozoid form and flagellate trophozoid form. So here you can see three pictures of this morphological forms. The first one is the amoeboid form, the second one the flagellate form and the third one cyst form, cyst stage. So the amoeboid form, you can see here some of the structures named as lobopodia, nucleus, karyosome, food vacuole, contractile vacuole and all. And on the uh, uh, in the second picture you can see two flagella and in the last one uh, there is a thick smooth double layered cis wall. So about the amoeboid form. It is a feeding, growing and replicating form having a diameter of about 10 to 20 micrometer. It is having a spherical nucleus, big endosome and pulsating vacuoles and there is another structure called as amoebostomes these are vacuoles that appears to be densely granular and it is used for engulfing rbc's and wbc's and there is another structure called as lobopodia you can see here so this one is meant for active motility the second form is the flagellate form so you can see the picture it is having two flagellae, so it is biflagellate, and this form, that is the flagellate form, occurs when trophozoids are transferred to distilled water, and this occurs within a minute. And it is also known as amoeboflagellate because this flagellate form can be reverted to amoeboid form, that is, it is interchangeable. So, uh, hence the name amoeboflagellate. And the next one is the cyst stage or the uh, cyst form. It is a resistant form that offers protection from desiccation, food deprivation and all. So you can see it is a spherical uh, in structure having a diameter of about 7 to 10 micrometer and it can withstand moderate heat about 45 degrees Celsius. But it dies at chlorine levels of 2 ppm and salinity of 0.7 percentage. And this cyst form is not seen in clinical specimens. And now this is the life cycle. So you can see the three forms, right? Cis, trophozoid, and flagellate form. So this enters uh, the human body uh, during swimming, diving, and all. So once it enters, it penetrates the amoeba, actually penetrates the nasal mucosa, and through olfactory nerve, it reaches the brain, and it causes PAM, or primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. So you can see, this uh, cis trophozoid and flagellate forms are uh, formed within the external environment and there is no need of any host for the uh, in order to complete its life cycle so no need of host so, or no host is required and uh, it is completed in the external environment and the amoeboid form of trophozoid multiplies by binary fission and during unfavorable condition it forms cyst and the flagellate form of trophozoid helps in spread of this enfowlery to new water bodies. And coming on to its pathogenesis, the incubation period is about 2 days to 2 weeks and the man acquires infection by swimming or diving in warm water contaminated with enfowlery and the amoeba invade nasal mucosa, pass through the olfactory nerve, invade the cribriform plate, enters the meninges and brain and it initiates acute purulent meningitis and encephalitis called PAM. Now coming on to its clinical manifestations, there will be fever which is abrupt in onset 
and you know it is a brain eating amoeba so there will be frontal headache vomiting stick uh, stiff neck ataxia seizure and coma now lab diagnosis the specimen uh, used are csf and biops brain tissue now coming on to its microscopy in wet mount it detects trophozoites with active directional motility at autopsy trophozoites can be demonstrated in brain histologically by if staining and culture is done on non nutrient agar plates coated with e coli and liquid axonic media and both trophozoites and cysts occurs in in culture uh, in molecular methods pcr is preferred uh, and in case of treatment the drug of choice is amphotericin b which is given intravenously instilled directly into the brain and treatment combining uh, meconazole and sulfadiazine has shown limited success only when administered early now coming on to the next organism that is acanthamoeba there are four species uh, acanthamoeba calbertsoni acanthamoeba casilani acanthamoeba polyphagia acanthamoeba astromix it causes three uh, kinds of diseases uh the first one is gae granulomatous amoebic encephalitis the second one is infections of lung and skin the third one chronic amoebic keratitis so uh first uh, about its morphology so uh, here is a picture that shows the two morphological forms same as that of the negleria foleri but uh, here both the trophozoites and the cysts are infectious so about the trophozoite it is about uh, 20 to 50 micrometer in size and uh, uh, just like uh, negleria foleri there is another pseudopodia here and it is called as acanthopodia which is a spine like pseudopodia and unlike negleria foleri there is no flagellate stage and now about the cyst which varies in shape and it is a double wall cyst having an ectocyst and an endocyst coming on to the life cycle you can see uh, as you know both the cyst and the trophozoites are uh, infectious and this can enters uh, the human body through various ways it can be either through the eyes or through the uh, nasal passage or through ulcerated or broken skin and all so the transmission is by inhalation of cyst and trophozoites or by ingestion of the cyst or even through traumatized skin or eyes once it enters it can cause several infections like it can cause keratitis of the eyes uh, gae and all so next is the pathogenesis here the manicus infection by inhalation of the aerosols or dust containing cysts and trophozoites and it invades the lungs and through the blood stream it reaches the cns and multiply by binary fission and it causes granulomatous uh, amoebic encephalitis so in case of negleria foleri it was through the olfactory nerve it reaches the cns over the brain but in case of acanthamoeba it is through the blood stream it reaches the cns and causes ga now coming on to the risk factors the risk factors includes immunodeficiency uh, diabetes malignancies sle alcoholism and it is fatal within days now coming on to the clinical manifestation it can cause keratitis and encephalitis so this is a picture that shows the acanthamoeba keratitis and uh, look it is actually seen in the healthy individuals uh, those who use contact lens and it it is a severely painful condition and it resembles that of the severe hepatic keratitis uh, and there will be unilateral photophobia excessive tearing redness and foreign body sensation and this keratitis and evitis can leads to permanent visual impairment or blindness now gae or granulomatous amoebic encephalitis this is actually seen in immunocompromised patients but the keratitis you know it is uh, seen in healthy individuals but ga is uh, commonly seen in immunocompromised patients and the clinical picture is uh, similar to that of uh, intracranial space occupying lesions with seizures paresis and mental deterioration and uh, another disease or another infection uh, includes disseminated infections 
uh, which is also seen in immunocompromised patients that affects the skin, lungs and sinus. Now coming on to its lab diagnosis, the specimens uh, used include corneal scraping as it causes keratitis and CSF uh, because it causes GAE and brain biopsy in GAE. Uh, then about uh, amoebic keratitis, demonstration of cyst in corneal scrapings are uh, performed by means of wet mount, histology and culture. And now uh, growth is also detected in nutrient agar overlaid with live or dead E. coli and incubated at 30 degrees Celsius. For rapid di diagnosis, fluorescent microscopy using calcofluor white staining and IFA test is performed. In case of GAE, demonstration of trophozoids and cysts in brain biopsy, culture and IF microscopy using monoclonal antibodies are performed. And the CSF shows lymphocytic pleocytosis, slightly elevated uh, protein levels and normal or slightly decreased uh, glucose level and CT scan. And now about the treatment for canthomoeba keratitis since it is an infection that uh, affects the eyes. Uh, topical administration of biguanate chlorhexidine with or without diamidine agent is preferred. In case of severe, uh, in severe cases, keratoplasty is uh, preferred. And in GAE, in case of GAE, there is no effective treatment. Uh, multi-drug combinations include including pentamidine, sulfadiazin, rifampicin, and fluconazole are being used with limited success. The last organism is Balmuthia mandrillaris that causes GAE uh, and these are the pictures, uh, two pictures that shows its morphological forms. The first one is the cyst stage and the second one is the amoeboid trophozoid stage and just like uh, acanthomoeba there is no flagellate stage but in the cyst form it is perical having a diameter of about 6 to 20 micrometer. Uh, unlike acanthomoeba it is having a three layered cyst wall an ectocyst, mesocyst and endocyst and uh, in light microscopy you can see outer irregular wall and inner smooth wall and its transmission is through respiratory tract, skin lesions. The life cycle is similar to that of the acanthomoeba and clinical manifestation include GAE which is seen in both healthy individuals and immunocompromised hosts that includes children and elderly individuals. And uh, coming on to the lab diagnosis, uh, specimen used is CSF and it detects trophozoids of uh, Balmuthia mandrillaris in the CSF and trophozoids and cysts in brain tissues. And uh, for molecular diagnosis, PCR. So uh, by this, we come to an end of this discussion on the topics. Uh, Negleria foliary, acanthamoeba and Balmuthia. Thank you.